defines and owns cultural heritage? Is it the people who create it? What if heritage is being used in a way that is considered inappropriate or even harmful? Anthropologist Michael Brown explored these questions further when he asked, who owns native culture? The answer may seem obvious. Native people own native culture. Dig a little deeper, however, and the answer is more complex, shaped by questions over what constitutes cultural and intellectual property, and whether it is appropriate to talk about owning culture or cultural heritage. These debates are at the heart of the Intellectual Property Issues in Cultural Heritage Project, also known as IPINCH, a seven-year international and interdisciplinary initiative based at Simon Fraser University. IPINCH explores intellectual property issues that are emerging within the realm of heritage, particularly those affecting Indigenous people. The IPINCH project looks at many different issues from the way in which cultural heritage is defined, to who controls and has access to it, and to how fair and appropriate use can be achieved, according to the unique values and needs of each society that we're working with. Um, for me, cultural heritage is anything that comes out of the past and is identified as still being important today. There is nothing in heritage, both in terms of, of uh, heritage sites or heritage objects or artifacts or archaeological sites, none of that has any meaning without the intangible qualities, the intangible values we endow them with. Um, all those regalias and things sitting in, in museums or uh, not being used, like that to me is the weirdest thing. that. That stuff's supposed to be danced, it's supposed to be feasted, you know, all those things are, it's embodied cultural heritage. Um, we have to move away from thinking as cultural heritage as, as simply objects to, to living beings in many sense for our people. At the forefront of the conversation about Indigenous cultural heritage are questions surrounding ownership. Can cultural heritage, including songs, stories, traditional knowledge, and cultural objects, really be owned by anyone? Certainly in Western society, we look at uh, whether it's heritage, whether it's property, as something belonging to someone. And we tend to look at that in terms of an individual's rights. When we're looking at non-Western societies, um, we are also looking at communal rights and communal forms of ownership. In a lot of our languages, we don't have words for ownership, and I think the closest translation that we can come up to is responsibility. Well, the IPINCH project is an opportunity to look at uh, issues relating to heritage, who benefits from it, who controls the process, um, in a way that really hasn't been done before at this scale. The IPINCH research community includes over 150 members worldwide, ranging from a core research team over two dozen partnering organizations, to students and associates. IPINCH funds 15 community-based initiatives around the world, including in Canada, Kyrgyzstan, the United States, New Zealand, Australia, and Japan. In each of these community-based initiatives, specific issues relating to intellectual property and cultural heritage, as identified by the community, are explored community-based initiatives was to create one set-aside bundle of opportunities where IPINCH would directly support something that was of specific interest linked to intellectual property and cultural heritage to a specific community. You know, the community is in the driver's seat of the research process. And this is one of the, the unique things about IPINCH that really um, lets it stand out from many other large-scale research projects like this. IPINCH has done something quite exciting in bringing together this interdisciplinary network of scholars working in collaboration with community partners and uh, funding the development of case studies has uh, really done a lot I think for both people in the network and those who are viewing the work of IPINCH to uh, create new ways of thinking about collaborative research. Um, so in doing this, I think IPINCH has really validated a lot of these practices and shown how important they are for negotiating the 
unequal relations of power that have really defined research with indigenous people um, and continues to play a role in um, contending with issues around ownership and control of cultural heritage in the digital age. In addition to community-based initiatives, IPINCH supports eight working groups that explore the practical, ethical, and policy implications of intellectual property issues in cultural heritage. Another important objective of the project is to support students who are working on these topics. One thing that uh, I've really uh, felt strongly about since I've been involved is being treated like a colleague and an equal by the members of the steering committee, but also by the other senior, you know, academics that are involved in the project. You know, we are developing a tradition, I hope, of, of greater uh, engagement with communities in whatever discipline you know, we're working with. Uh -huh.